All right, last stop on the show. Let's kick it on down to Lexington where the Wildcats will be having their spring game. Different time here, 1 o'clock Eastern, noon Central, again on ESPN SEC Network streaming. But uh, Kentucky with uh, some staff turnover. Want to see how the Kentucky offense looks. Make sure see that it hasn't drastically changed. Uh, Rick Scangarello, the new offensive coordinator, plans on keeping things uh, a little close to the vest. We'll get we'll play some of his comments here in a minute. But I want to see if Will Levis, what he looks like, see if he's taking a next step. And again, we probably won't learn much about Will Levis in this spring game that we didn't already know. But how about Deuce Hogan, the Iowa transfer? I believe he was a former Elite 11 quarterback. I want to see what he brings. Because I, don't, I didn't have much confidence in the backup quarterback position at Kentucky last season, but that could be changing with what I'm hearing about Deuce Hogan and his big arm. So I want to see what he looks like in this system. And, of course, uh, potentially the breakout star there in Lexington this season is going to be Tavon Robinson, the transfer receiver from Virginia Tech. Everyone's going to be asking, is he the next Wandell Robinson? That's I think that's unfair because he was such a dynamic player. He's going to be a big-time player in the NFL. Let's just see what Robinson, how he fits into this offense, see if he can make some plays in the spring game because, uh, you know, Kentucky's going to need some help there. They love what they got at running back. And speaking of that, Jaton McClain, I want to see what he looks like. We all know Chris Rodriguez, what uh, what the workhorse he is. He's going to break the school record as long as he just has his average season here. So we know what we're getting in RB1. I want to see what we're getting behind him, Cavassier Smoke or McLean. Who's going to be stepping up I'm hearing great things about McLean? I want to see him in action. But what I really want to see with Kentucky, which it's not sexy, but this is going to be potentially what takes this Kentucky team and the, the defense in particular to the next level is this defensive line. They've, they've had so many great additions via recruiting the last couple of years, but we all know Kentucky is a such a developmental program. They don't rush guys out onto the field. So I need to see guys like Trayvon Ripka, Justin Rogers, Octavius Oxidine. I want to see that they've taken the next step and they can set the tone Oh, Kentucky, we all know, is a is a program built through the offensive line, but there's some transition there this year with a new line coach and two tackles off to the NFL. The defensive line, I want to see him dominate on Saturday. I don't think there's any excuses for those players to have an outstanding spring game. I need to see it. And speaking of the old line, hey, he may not be ready game one, week one, but there's no way he doesn't see the field Kenyatta Goodwin, the five-star offensive lineman, how does he factor in to the big blue wall down there? It's probably going to be a backup here in the spring game, but I want to see what he looks like in full uniform and see just the, the, the raw potential that he's got to be the next great Kentucky offensive lineman. So that those are kind of the things that I'll have my eye on. And I just thought, uh, if you don't know, I'm, I'm sure the Kentucky fans do, but they're expecting rough weather there in Lexington. It's going to be cold. It's going to be rainy. So, you know, who knows what kind of turnout we're going to get. And that is uh, something that uh, the offensive coordinator, Rich Scangarello, kind of jokes around about. But in addition to that, you know, he seems very, very pleased with the players he inherited, particularly Will Levis and the new center, Eli Cox. Uh, so let's kick it over to Rich Scangarello, who kind of previews the Kentucky spring game and what we'll be getting uh, in Lexington this weekend. Spring game, do you kind of want to give people a show, or do you kind of view it as more of just a regular practice? Kind of what you're... You know, if it's cold enough and no one shows up and then <laughs> we don't show anything, everyone will be happy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, but no, I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, one of the advantages that that my you know we have right now is there's an unknown to what we're doing. Um, obviously, you'd like to keep. Um, as much of that in-house as possible until the last second. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, as it goes, it, you know, there's you don't want to go out there and give them everything. But, uh, yeah, you want to go out. It's a con To me, the biggest part is we're continuing to evaluate, and there's got to be 55 to 70 reps out there for players that they have to get better at, we have to evaluate them at, um, that are invaluable. So how we use those and um, trying to put guys in positions to make plays is what's most important to me and seeing who can step up in those moments. And um, I thought last week, uh, again, 
it was good. Um, and I, I, want, I hope we can continue to do that and build on that and take it into summer. Um, but no, we're not going to open up the playbook to the world, and that's uh, just the way it goes. <laughs> what you see now, how did that compare to your expectations before camp in terms of the guys with, with women and how they transitioned to, to your system? Yeah, it, it, it's, the, it's been, you know, 1 to 10. It's, there's guys that are, that are 10, and it's easy, and they've, they've, uh, it's, they've picked it up quick, and there are other guys that are new, and maybe their foundation isn't there, and it's going to take a little longer. But that's... <laughs> The bottom line is it's our job to learn what they can and can't handle, and we're going to push them to the max. Um, and I've been very pleased. I, you know, In the end, if you have a quarterback that um, has the mental capability to handle a lot, a center um, like Eli that can handle, handle a lot, um, I think that they can steer the ship and they can bring others along, and, and um, it helps them you know, f flow in your system a little easier. And, um, I've been pleased, though. Uh, we have, you know, coaches done a great job. We've recruited some really smart football players. There's talent, but there's some really smart football IQ guys, and uh, that that we need that. Our system is not easy in that way. You can't, you, you can't, you got to have some ability to learn to be able to play for us. And then these sentiments were echoed by the new offensive line coach Zach Yenzer, who obviously coached with Scangarillo there with the San Francisco 49ers. Now they're tradition transitioning together back to college through Lexington. So let's kick it over to Zach Yenzer, who echoes a lot of the same sentiments, loves what he inherited, and, you know, make no mistake, the players are learning these coaches, the coaches are learning the players. They got hired on so late in the process, right before spring practice. Kind of interesting and transparent comments here. Uh, and it's it, I, if I'm a Kentucky fan, I'm fired up that both these coaches seem to be so pleased with the players they inherited there in Lexington. Rich mentioned that Eli being able to handle a lot. How's that transition to center gone? It seems I think like it's, I, yeah, I think it's, I think Eli had a really good year last year at guard, but I think transition to center has, has helped him out tremendously. He's, uh, he's a very bright guy, gets everybody on the same page. He's physical, he's strong. Um, you know, I joke around with him all the time. So he has big shoes to fill with Fortner and Drake's in the room again. So, I mean, he has, <laughs> he has big, big, big shoes to fill. Uh, playing center here so he's up to the challenge I think he's done a phenomenal job um, and I think he's going to continue to get a lot better and I think he's he has done it he, he is what makes the O-line run I mean right now it's just he's on this he's getting the guys on the same page we do as he, we go as he goes you know he's you know he was making all the mic points and the, you know the protection calls and all that stuff so he's doing a really good job guys in the room in the O-line room and it's a, a tribute to the 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 culture that Coach Stoops has put together. It's a tribute to Coach Schlarman's recruiting before I got, I mean, it's just a, it's all of it. And uh, it's an awesome group. I'm, en I'm enjoying it. They're, I think they're having fun. You know, they're having fun, they're loose, but they're, but they're, but when it's time to, to get down and to play football, they, they've done a really good job with it. And that's kind of our mentality, man. We're gonna have fun. It's, it's too hard not to have fun. If they don't enjoy coming to this building right here, then I don't think they can be good football players. They have to enjoy to come over here, enjoy being around us, enjoy watching film and, and, and the things that it takes to, you know, in the classroom or in the in the meeting room to be a good football player. They have to enjoy doing that, and I think I think they are. All right, so that's going to do it on this episode of the show. Still waiting for those uh, SEC East over-under win totals to be released. I was told Tuesday they're not out as of this recording on Tuesday evening, but as soon as they are, Cousin Shane and I will be breaking those down on the latest episode. So that's something to be looking forward to before the weekend arrives. But again, that's going to do it. I appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out. We'll catch you on the next one.